Hello everyone, uh, I'm Philip, this is the Flutter Boring Show, and with me today is Ian. Hi Hello. Ian. Uh, so Ian, what do you do in Flutter? I am the TL. Alright, what does it mean? That means I'm the tech lead, that means all the mistakes we've made are my fault. Right, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, on GitHub, uh, Ian is Hixie, so uh, if you're following uh, the project, you've probably seen Hixie a lot. Um, so Ian, today we're going to talk about slivers which is a scary topic for many, uh, maybe. It's not the simplest of our right. APIs. Uh, on the other hand, many people don't really need to know slivers, right? Many things are done for them. But like, this is an advanced class. Uh, what is a sliver? A sliver, maybe just to take a step back before we talk about slivers, uh, we should talk about um, how uh, Flutter does layout in general. So in Flutter we have um, render objects, and render objects are, most of the render objects you'll see are render boxes, and so for example container and size box and so on, they're all render boxes. Render boxes have Cartesian coordinates, they have a width and a height, and the way they lay out is you give them a minimum and maximum width and a minimum and maximum height, and then they look at their children, they lay out their children, they do whatever they want with them, and then they decide, I'm going to be this width and this height, and it has to be within the constraints they were given. Mm -hmm. That works great for boxes. It doesn't work great for scrolling, particularly when you do things like app bars and, and other weird scrolling effects. And so to do scrolling, we have a different protocol that we call the sliver protocol. Sliver as in a slice of something, mm -hmm. so a slice of something that scrolls. And in the sliver protocol, there are many different axes. Uh, if we look at the documentation for um, uh, render sliver, you'll find uh, the protocol that, that, that it uses. So, yes. So we use, instead of using uh, the min, max, height, and width, we have sliver constraints. Mm -hmm. And if you click on sliver constraints, you'll see there are many axes here. There's literally the axis, that's the direction in which it's scrolling, the axis direction, whether it's going backwards and forwards, we have the cross-axis direction, which is the, the, the other direction. If you have a grid, for example, it's scrolling up and down, say, but it's then going left and right in the cross-axis. Um, there are many other aspects. There's how much uh, we've scrolled, how much overlap there is with the previous sliver, and so on. And so all of these are the incoming constraints for a sliver. And if we go to sliver geometry, you'll see the equivalent of size on the render box side, on the render sliver side, is how big you are, that's the paint extent, how, uh, where the next sliver should be, that's the layout extent, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. And there's a, again, there's a whole number of, of, um, uh, of values here that you right. can set. So, so okay. So to summarize, for a box, I only take a, like a offset and, and size, uh, and I give you or I'm sorry, constraints, uh, and then I give you offset and size. You give it a size, yeah. The size, offset actually size. is technically right. part of the painting. Right. You can think of it as part of the layout. It, right. It's often how we do it. But for slivers, you get all these things, right. and then you can decide whatever. Okay. That's right. Okay. And the, the reason we do that is, for example, to do uh, one of the, the app bars that stretches and grows as you scroll. Well, the app bar needs to know how far you've scrolled so it knows how big it should be. It needs to know where the next uh, sliver, for example, a sliver list, where that should be. We also use it to do things like uh, lazy loading of content in lists. So when you have a, a, a list view, say, mm -hmm. we don't actually instantiate all of the boxes, you know, all the million boxes of your list. We only instantiate the ones on the screen and a little before and a little after for caching purposes and accessibility. And we do that by using this protocol where we look at how far we've scrolled. We're like, okay, we'll start building boxes here. How far is left on the page? That's the remaining pain extent on the sliver constraints. Mm -hmm. And then we'll stop uh, rendering boxes, and so we only render the ones that are actually necessary. Mm -hmm. So okay, so uh, so now that we kind of know what sliver is and what sliver cons um, sorry the sliver protocol is, uh, I thought we might want to try one of the more advanced things that are using slivers, and that's mm -hmm. the sliver app bar. Um, but like to be clear, 
you know, as you said, even list view is using slivers, yep. right? Um, OK. Pretty much everything that scrolls in Flutter is using slivers. There's one exception. We have a, a, the, I forget what it's called, the one box viewport or something. Uh, that is a, a viewport that lets you scroll a single item around. Uh -huh. uh, that's the exception. That one you don't usually use because it's not lazy. Uh, it's only useful if you have, say, the contents of a dialog box, which are almost always on the screen, but you're worried that if the screen is too small or if the keyboard comes up and shrinks the dialog, then it might not quite fit, and so you'll you'll want to scroll in, right. inside that. So there it doesn't matter if you're lazy, because you're going to have everything instantiated anyway normally. Right. Uh, but anytime you have a list where you don't know how many things are in the list, you use list view, use grid view, custom scroll view, all of those are using slivers under the hood. Right. Um, OK, so what, what we're going to do uh, is, uh, first of all, use the sliver app bar, right? So we have um, a small app here, um, and it's, it's just uh, you know um, a list of randomly generated startup names, like Masspin or Floodwolf. And uh, we want this thing to be kind of a, a little more interesting than just like, you know, being there. Right now it's like a box, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, here is this app bar. Yep. Um, it's a very simple API. What happens if we use a sliver app bar? First well, of all, it's not going to be happy at all. Yeah. So what do I do? So. Oh, the, no. OK. Yeah, you, you, the sliver app bar, it turns out, is not an app bar for the purposes oh. of the scaffold. So the, the, the way to do a sliver app bar, the way that I remember how to do it, is to go look up sliver app bar in the documentation. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I put there an answer for how to actually uh, do this. OK. Um, <laughs> in fact, it's, uh, the, it'll be the custom scroll view, I believe, is where the actual uh, example will be. Um, oh, OK. So we, so we yeah. remove the scaffold? So yeah, so we, d we don't need, well, we can st still have the scaffold, because if you have like a floating action button or a draw, you'll still right, use that. Right. So uh, but instead of a list view, you'll use a custom scroll view. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find this, if you look at the list view documentation, there, there's an example there for how to go from list view to custom scroll view. A list view is really just a wrapping around custom scroll view that forces you to use a sliver list. Mm -hmm. uh, but custom scroll view is the real workhorse for, for viewports and, right. and slivers. So yeah, slivers yeah, um, get into the custom scroll view. So OK, uh, let's go through this. So a custom yes. scroll view takes many children. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, we use the name children uh, when we have many children. Because because this is a sliver uh, parent, we use the word slivers instead of children. That way, you know that the children are going to be slivers, and they're not going to be rendered boxes. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have successfully named all of our sliver widgets with the word sliver at the start. So. You mm -hmm. can start typing sliver in your drop down. It'll tell you all the ones that we can use. Right. Wow, that's a lot. Um, good. So we can use sliver app bar then. Yep. OK. Right. Um, and so. And sliver app bar works exactly the same as app bar in okay. terms of its uh, arguments and so on. So that would be. Um... And the reason we're putting this in the custom scroll view instead of the scaffold is it needs to scroll. Right. And so it needs to be inside the Ooh. view. If it was inside the scaffold, the scaffold isn't scrolling. And so the right. scaffold would have no idea what was going on there. Right. Good. So we already have this, which yep. I like. There you go. Um, oh, it also even it removes the, the text. That's nice. OK, so uh, and now what I do if I want to have my list here? So that's it. where you use a sliver list. So again, this is a list of slivers. So you can put as many things in here as you want. One of them mm -hmm. would be a sliver list. And sliver list has basically the same uh, arguments as list view, because list view is literally just a wrapper around custom scroll view plus sliver list. Right. So you can just pass in your children that you were passing before, and that should no. just work like before. It just needs delegate. So I need ah, you want you want one of the different constructors on sliver list. We have many oh, different constructors. Okay, okay. I have a new MacBook, so I can't write. Uh, <laughs> sliver list what? Sliver list. Oh. Uh, I forget what the. I think maybe. Do, oh, do we yes, want we to... probably have to provide that. See, this is yeah. why I go to the documentation. <laughs> so if you go to the list view documentation again, <laughs> you'll find that there is a step by step instructions for how to do this. Right. But this is, you know, this is interactive. So we need to do this uh, the hard way. Uh, sliver list. 
delegate, I think, uh, so So there are two, right? One of them is the builder, like uh, list view builder, and the the this one is the list, yep. where we actually have the list. That's right. And here we have children, which I'll just steal from here. Yep. And... Uh, so as a general rule, I would always encourage people to use the builder variant rather than the um, list variant, because right. the list variant the, both of them are lazy in that they both uh, don't render the render, they don't instantiate the render boxes in advance. Um, but the list version does instantiate the widgets because you create the whole list of the widgets. Right. Uh, when you have, so in this case, for example, you have your all names yeah. uh, list, uh, you can actually use the builder uh, delegate to just build just the widgets that it needs at that particular right. time. Right. Let's do that. Uh, so. Builder to look at, and of course, we need a builder. Oh, it actually, so let's probably be context and index. Come on. Oh. Okay, we need to go to looks for this. Yeah, index widget builder, which is it gets context and index, yep. and then I'm just gonna no. So, yeah, so you can just call your build tile right. for the specific name that is that index in its list. So all names, index, and then, but I need to tell it to yep, uh, sure. to not do things that are out of bounds, right? So you can give it the uh, specific number of children. That's one of the other arguments to right. use a builder delegate. You actually don't necessarily need to give that number. In this case, it's, it's the right thing to do. But in general, you don't need to give that number. If your builder returns null, we'll assume that's the last child. Right. The reason to give the count is that'll allow you to use the scroll bars. It'll be able to predict the length of the list better and so forth. Right. OK, cool. And uh, yes. So that's great. Uh, let's play around with the sliver at bar just for a bit. So it has different options. It has lots of options. So for uh, example, you can set pinned. That will make it stay at the top of the list always. Kind of like, Notice oh, the shadow appears oh, when nice. goes That took me days to implement. <laughs> um. <laughs> but it was good. Um, what else is there? Uh, floating is a, another effect that people like. Um, so that one will come. So I think, I don't know if you can be pinned and floating. Oh, OK. But if you remove the pinned, then it'll scroll away. And then when you come back, it'll scroll back. Oh, it's uh, my computer just, for some reason, stopped. OK. I'm sorry, I need to rebuild. So again, new computer, things are weird. Come on. Okay. Yeah, so it goes uh, away, but now if you pull okay. back, it comes back nice. straight away. Yes, yeah, so we go to here and then yep. nice. It was interesting when you had pinned and floating, it didn't complain, but then it made the text disappear, which is an interesting effect. I'm not sure what's up, what's up with that. Right. Yeah, it also may maybe bug. died at that point. <laughs> uh, right. I think it just died. Yeah, for some reason. Sure um, so, do, 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 so, there are other effects. You can you can add a, uh, what's it called? Flexible space? Flexible space, yeah. I think you need to set the expanded height as well. Oh, OK. Flexible space is what, so if you just set the expanded height, I think that will uh, do the bigger app bar that then shrinks. The flexible space is then what will appear behind the, uh, so now if you go the other way, it should shrink. There we go. Right. Love it. OK. Uh, and if you put uh, something in the flex flexible space, like put a placeholder in the flexible space, um, it'll uh, show you where that's drawing. So that's the X there. Oh. So that's that's where the the way the uh, flexible space goes. So typically, you put some sort of image there right. or something like that. Awesome. There's also, um, we probably shouldn't do this in this case, but there's also a way you can put a bottom 
uh, in the app bar and you put a, a tab strip there or something like that. Right. Um, there's a bunch of other features on the. Yeah, this is great. So Sliver app bar. And uh, if you look at the implementation, um, let me see if we can get to build, right? So Sliver app bar uses a Sliver persistent header, which is the underlying mm -hmm. uh, render object to do this. Um, except that that's actually, there's a little bit of complications around app right. bars because uh, there's three different types of app bars. There's the pinned floating and the pinned floating or or the normal or something. There's a, there's a bunch of different app bars. Right. And each one of those has a different render object under the hood. But we wanted to all expose that as one widget so you could just set the, the flags on it. Uh -huh. Because of this, uh, it gets a little tricky between the widget and the render object at the bottom. Um, in most cases, if you were to make your own uh, render sliver with your own widget to go with it, you wouldn't have that level of complexity. Right. So this is great. So so we have something that's using slivers. Uh, we can play around with it. We can you know add things to it. We can well, see the code. Yeah. One thing that would be good to show is so so far we've done two slivers, uh, the the app bar one and the list uh, the the sliver list one. Right. Both of those are slivers on the outside, but on the inside they take boxes. Right. Placeholders uh -huh. a box, text is a box. All of these list right. tiles are boxes. So there are also slivers that take slivers on the outside and slivers on the inside. Hmm. Uh, the main example is sliver padding. So for example, you could wrap the list view or the app bar in a sliver padding. Okay. And that works the same or... Like the sliver list? Yeah, you could wrap the sliver list in a sliver padding, for example. Uh, and it works similarly to a padding widget in the box world. Uh -huh. um, again, because this is a sliver, we call this a sliver instead of a child, just to remind you that it takes a sliver as a child. Right. And then padding. And then you set the padding, and that works the same as a regular padding, so just an edge inserts. Uh -huh. And then uh, when you reload, you'll find that whoop, your list is indented. Oh, nice. And the tricky thing is you can do the same to the app bar. OK, let's do that. It's not clear to me what's going to happen when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because app bars do not expect to be padded. Sliver padding. Let's break this. Uh, so sliver. And then padding. Let's do twenty-four. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> now the the padding doesn't want it to be floating, so we we're still right. trying to make a sliver app bar. The padding doesn't know how to be so the sliver padding doesn't know how to float. Right. And so it it's probably adjusting the. Right. Uh, remember how I said that we're passing constraints down and then geometry back up. The constraints get passed to the padding. The padding then passes the constraints to the app bar. The app bar is returning constraints, uh, a geometry that imply that it should float. The padding's like, oh man, I don't know how to do that. And so it like rewraps the, the geometry into a different set of geometry that indents it and everything, and then passes that up. Uh, and that's why here the, the app bar is not floating. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's fine. What happens when I put something above the sliver app bar? You try it. Put put a sliver list, or you can put a sliver um, sliver to box adapter. That's the simplest sliver is a sliver to box adapter. Uh, it is basically just a container that is a sliver on the outside and a box on the inside. So let's do this sliver what sliver to box adapter. There you go. And then you can put whatever child you want in there. This is a it expects a box oh. inside. Oh. So you can put a Flutter logo or a text or whatever. Yeah, yeah, let's do the Flutter logo. I wonder what size that'll be. <laughs> oh. And then there it is. <laughs> now. OK, and now the, it's actually, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is trying to, you know, the app bar is actually trying to float over things. Yeah, the app bar is getting really confused because the floating app bar doesn't expect anyone to be able to. If you remove the floating, uh, you'll see that it's right. doing. Yeah. Floating app bars do not like to. Yeah, float. of course not. I just wanted to break <laughs> it and I didn't. So, okay, good. Um, the so, other thing you can do, um, which is particularly fancy, so if you put copy your entire list above your app bar, you can then, I forget how this works, but you can set a center to your custom scroll view. 
and then half of your list will be above the center and half of it will be below the center. So right now you just have a list followed by the app bar followed by the list. Right. But if we look at uh, custom scroll views documentation, there's a way to set like the center. Um, forget how this works. Oh, maybe we never expose this on the widget. Maybe this is only exposed in the render object. Hmm. Never mind. False, false alarm. <laughs> <coughs> the, the underlying logic knows how to have double-ended lists that are infinite in both directions and have a center in the middle, um, right. the, like the app bar, for example. But apparently, we never exposed that. Uh, yeah. Feature for next year. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, all right, I, I think we, we covered app, Sliver app bar and like the crazy things that you can do with slivers. Let's create our own sliver. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where's the <laughs> where w w do do you want like uh, like for example here do you think between these two um, between the app bar and the list can we put like a weird sure, sliver? We yeah. Okay. Whatever we want. Anywhere we want. Um, That's the I beauty of this composition approach. Right. Is you can Mix no, no, no. I just mean like in terms of like showing stuff. Yeah, off. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I do? Sliver. So we have to create our own render object first. If you want to create your own okay. sliver, uh, so we need to create a new render object class. Um, What's it going to be called? Sliver Philip. Mm -hmm. I don't sure. know whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's going to extend uh, sliver. Uh, sorry, it's going to take render sliver. Extend render sliver. Uh, now, I have to admit, at this point, I very quickly should just be called render sliver. Oh, you might need to imp imp uh, import oh, okay. the uh, okay. rendering library. Yeah, there you go. Now, at this point, I rapidly um, forget how any of this works. And every time I make my own render object, I always look it up. Um, <laughs> we can read documentation. It's okay. So uh, the first thing to do would be to look at the render sliver docs. And those are pretty extensive. Uh, and they were written specifically so that I would remember how to write more render slivers later. Um, <laughs> so right. the first part of this uh, talks about how Things how work. the protocol yeah. works and what we is saw this going before. on. Right? Yes. Uh, and then there's a sub subsection specifically about writing a render sliver subclass. So there's several kinds of slivers you can do. Uh -huh. uh, we've talked about them so far. I'll there's just make it bigger. So. Um, there are sliver to slivers. Right, so you have a sliver on the outside, a sliver on the inside, like sliver padding. There's sliver to box, where you have a sliver on the outside, but box, like rendered a sliver to box adapter, for example, or the app bar. Uh -huh. There's sliver to many slivers, like sliver list or sliver grid. Uh -huh. um, and I suppose in principle you could do something that isn't a sliver on the outside and there's a sliver on the inside. That's basically what a viewport is. Um, right. Custom scroll view under the hood uses a viewport to actually do all the sliver logic. And it has to adapt from box, because on the outside we're using boxes, to slivers on the inside, and that's what a, a viewport is. So the easiest one to do is a sliver to box um, okay. uh, sliver. Um, is it is it um, something that I can oh, render sliver to box? Yeah, we could just copy and paste render the sliver box adapter and then adjust that one if you want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what I, I would know. normally do. <laughs> okay, let, uh, let's do this. Uh, what is it? Uh, you want render sliver to box adapter? We'll go holy just there. You pass it. There you go. That one. Okay. Uh, and I just do this? So yeah, so the, oh, it, the perform layout is right. how basically all render objects uh, have a layout method and then they have a paint method. And in the case of slivers, there's a few other methods you have to implement, um, but we'll talk about those later. Right. Uh, so first we have this um, Sorry, I just need to, yeah, uh, yes. And in this case, you want it to take a single uh, box child. So you'll want to also create a, um, you'll, you'll want to change the, um, uh, the declaration, so it's uh, mixing in one of the um, one of the other classes. If you look at what yeah. the other one is, you'll notice it's mixing in render sliver single box adapter, uh -huh. and that is a nice mix in. Um, it's actually extending it. Oh, is it so extending it? Yeah. No, oh, even better. Um, so that's a a render object that knows how to deal with having a single child. Right. Does things like adding and removing a child. So like, mostly you would want that, or like, well, in our, in our case, we would just want that. And uh, it really depends on the that. effect you're trying to get. Right. Um, right. It's hard to predict what effect. 
people. And then know. I just copy paste. That's my favorite uh, way to implement anything. So uh, mm -hmm, if I can. Uh, <laughs> So in this case, this class actually uh, doesn't have a paint method because the super class automatically paints the child at zero zero, um, uh -huh. which is the easiest way to do um, to do the, the sliver work. So do we care? Let's okay, yeah. So yeah, this is perfectly right. reasonable. So if you if you use this one now, you'll find. So for, we also have to make a widget to wrap the. Um, so re so really, we should call this render sliver fillet because this is our render object. And then we'll create a um, we'll create a separate class called Sliver Philip, which is our um, stateless. Uh, nope, it's actually a render object. Which right, all right. Um, so we can yeah, class Sliver Philip extends. Uh, I believe it'll extend a single child. Uh, nope, none of those. Um, let's look it up again. Look mm -hmm. at the children of uh, render object widget. The subclasses of render object widget. If you look up oh. render object widget in the docs, you'll right. find it'll list all the subclasses. Render object. So up here where it says implementers, you'll see all the different implementers. Right. And the one that we care about is single child render object widget. There we go. Okay. So and that's this, what this, we yeah. This again, much like your the other superclass we're using knows how to handle just having a child. It doesn't really care exactly how you deal with it. It just knows that, um, yeah. Right. And, and then this has to return a render sliver Philip in the uh, constructor. There we go. And then uh, you don't have any arguments except the child. And we the child is dealt with uh, by the single child render object widget, so we don't have to worry about that. We do have to add a constructor to take our child. Mm -hmm. oh. No? OK. Um. And we normally will also take a key. So normally we'll have two named arguments, a, a key of type key and a child of type widget. OK, so widget child and key key. And I think both of those can be passed to the superclass, although, again, this is where I look it up every time. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Wait, is it? Yes. OK. okay. And then normally, we would also have a update render object, uh, mm -hmm. but we don't have anything to update because we don't have any arguments right now, so there's nothing to, to do there. OK. Um, so now, if we try adding that to our list, in theory, it should do the same as uh, we did before with the render, uh, with the sliver to box adapter. So um, we can put it there, and yeah. we can add it and give it the child of text high or something. Yep. Let's try. Uh, it. This will probably fail because writing code never passes the first time. Yeah, and also, uh, I don't know what's going on with my um, computer, but it's just froze again. So, sorry about that. If this happens to you, please follow bug. Yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but not now. Um, oh, hi. hi. Okay, good. Good. This is great. So. Um, so crazy things that we can do with this. So let's let's put something bigger in there to make it bigger. To right. It. Like we can add a container or something with some big height, and mm -hmm. then making it big will make it much more obvious that we're doing crazy stuff when we start doing crazy stuff. Right. So let's do uh, some colors, like red, of course, and then in it there should be what? Well, text. And then probably also give it a height. Right. And height of 50? Sure. How big is that? OK. Let's make it 150. OK. That'll give us more space to play with. All right. right. So now if we look at the um, if we look at the render object, now you'll notice somewhere we're returning a geometry. So when we don't have a child, right, we return 0. And silver geometry dot 0 is a, a uh, constant instance of sliver geometry that just has all the numbers set to zero because 
there's nothing to show. Um, so like if um, okay, so if I do this, yep, uh, this will always just not exist. Yep. I mean like it won't. Okay. And as you see, it doesn't show anything. Yes. Uh, but we have a child, so we don't want to do that. Uh, the next thing we do is we lay out the child. Now, the sliver constraints object has an as box constraints getter uh, method, mm -hmm. you can see there. And we use that to very quickly turn the sliver constraints into the sort of equivalent box constraints. It's usually the box constraints you want in this kind of single child case. Mm -hmm. um, and what it does is it looks at what the cross extent is, the cross axis extent, and that just, okay, that's going to be the width. And it figures out how much room you have, which typically will be infinite in the height direction. It will make that the max uh, extent uh -huh. uh, in the height. But it knows about the axis direction. It knows about the growth direction. It knows about all the different things. And so it picks the right one. So if you actually had a horizontal list, it would use the height as the cross axis oh. and the, the width as the normal axis and so on. It's a, it's a relatively simple method, but it, it was so convenient when you're doing this kind of stuff. Uh, so next, we have to figure out what we want to do. So um, we don't have the equivalent for going the other way to find out what the child extent, that's the, the height of the child if you're a vertical list, or the width of a child if you're a horizontal list. Mm -hmm. And so we have this switch here that does that for us. Um, it figures out the child extent based on which axis the list is in. Right. So in our case, it's going to be the height. Height. Yep, but okay. you could easily switch your custom scroll view to be a horizontal uh, custom scroll view. In fact, we should try that. What happens if you make that, if you do that? Um, do, do, do like uh, yeah, here? I had an axis argument here that says the axis direction, something along those lines. Scroll direction. Oh, scroll direction. Yes. And it takes an axis direction, and I think there's like four different. Oh, it takes an axis. Okay, there you go. Right. Yeah. This is cool. We can have like a, a bar on the left. But notice how now our container is um, is correct. Is it's, correct. Yes. And, like it's all worked, and that's because of that switch statement where we're looking at the width instead of the height. Right. The the sliver the 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 code here that we are setting the height to 150. That's being ignored because the height is forced to right. be the height of the of the, of the viewport. Um, and we didn't set a width, so we just shrink. So, uh, so that's what that switch statement is doing. After that, we're then trying to figure out, okay, what is the uh, the size of the child essentially uh, in terms of um, the sliver geometry? So this is where you start calling these convenience methods. Um, where are they? Is that on the sliver? Okay. Yeah, the sliver. I think it might be in, on the render sliver helper class. There's mm -hmm. there's a class that has a bunch of these methods that help you. Uh, do these computations, but you don't have to use these. So we can like delete those entirely, and we'll see what happens when we put in our own numbers. Uh, and we can remove the asserts as well because I'm right. Not want to try and explain why each of these things has to be true necessarily right now. Um, so then here's the geometry, and we can uh, place into these numbers whatever we want. So the first one that really matters is the paint extent. I believe that's the only one you actually have to give. We should have a look at the sliver geometry constructor and see which ones it really wants you to give. Um, in fact, it has defaults for pretty much everything, so you are you don't really have to give yeah, it. Yeah, it looks like. Um, a lot of them default to paint extent, or like layout extent, I believe, will automatically use the paint extent if you gave it. Mm -hmm. Layout extent is how far down the next child will be. Paint oh. extent is how much you're going to paint. There's also hit test extent, hit test extent, which is how big you are for taps. So you can make yourself bigger than you're going to paint um, so that you'll tap in an right. area where you're not painting and so on and so forth. Um, What's cache extent? So cache extent, so uh, the lists will render, um, let me go to the whiteboard. Yeah. <coughs> so the lists will render uh, what's on the screen. Right. I, I mentioned earlier that they're lazy. So we have, you know, this is what's on the screen, and we have a bunch of items on the screen. But the user scrolls. And sometimes, like, say these things have an image, right, like an avatar or something. Mm -hmm. If the user scrolls, we're going to very quickly need to have this image and this image ready. And so instead, what we do, instead of just 
rendering it just at the last minute, is we actually have a few pixels, I forget how many, like 200 or something like that. We have 200 pixels or something like that of content below the list and also above the list that we have pre-rendered and we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also use this for accessibility. So on iOS in particular, if this is selected with the accessibility tools and you say, go to the next one, right. we need to know where it is. Right? On Android, the API, you can just say, oh, I don't have it yet. Come tell me and scroll, and I'll tell you what it is. Right. But on iOS, you need to have it already. And so when we scroll to the next one, we have it already because we pre-computed where it would be. And that's what the cache is. And so in... Uh, the API here, you'll see on the constraints and you'll see on the geometry that there's mentions of the cache. Now, you don't actually have to implement any of this. And if you just leave it off, you'll find it defaults to reasonable values. Right. Um, in our case, it really doesn't matter because we have a single child. We're always going to lay it out because right. <laughs> otherwise, what would we do? Uh, and so we can just ignore all right. of the cache. But like, wh what would you like put there? Is it like something's bigger than like a bigger number or? Yeah, so the cache extent tells the system how much have you cached. So for example, say, uh, say right. that your list is actually like this short, right? Mm -hmm. So you've, you've reached the end of your list, your, your list goes up to here, but then you've reached the end of your list. There's nothing else to pre-cache because you don't have any more content. Right. And so your cache extent wouldn't extend past you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do have content, you have a bunch of content, you can say, oh, I've cached everything up to here. Right. And that, that's what the cache extent is about, if I remember correctly. Right. So we, all right, so I, it looks like we don't need this. Uh, we might not need this because it's a child the, that we're just. The pain extent, I think, is the one that we do need to give. OK. Uh, because otherwise, it'll be 0. And if right. the pain extent is 0, then we're not showing anything. So I can just do like, OK, 75. Yeah. Um, and then this one, hit test extent. We can get rid of that one. Um, max paint extent is how much, what is the maximum we could ever paint? Right. OK. And then. And I believe that also defaults to paint extent. Let's see. I just want to. No, oh, maybe not. Oh. Yeah, the ones that default are layout extent, hit text extent, and cache extent. Uh, so you do need to give a max paint extent. Mm -hmm. And then this is has visual overflow. Yeah, that one you don't have to worry about. That right. that's about making certain optimizations work later. Oh, cool. Wait, did it happen? What if I do fifty? Oh. So here you can see one of the first weird effects that we're getting. So notice how when we got to the top of the screen, it didn't go off straight away? Yeah. Or the, the next list didn't go off right, straight away. Right. That's because the paint extent is being fixed here. So we're always painting 50, regardless right. of where we are. Also, it, it covers the, oh, because. So we're, we're always taking as much, we're always scrolling as much as the, the child. Right. So. We're always taking up as much of the scroll, if you like, as the child. But we're always painting 50. Uh-huh. So, OK, so we could do like this. And then, ah, uh, that bug again. See? Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Okay, so so we'll what can we do? Like, can we, for example, something that really makes it clear that this is done on basically every frame um, for us, and we can do whatever? Uh, can we like, like, you know, if the if the scroll offset, which we get right, uh, if the scroll offset is even, then we yeah, we could totally do that. Yeah. Uh, so we look up the, um, you're, you're given the constraints uh, as input here, the right. area you have constraints or access. So you can use anything on the constraints object to determine what the geometry will be. Mm -hmm. uh, so constraints. And then you'll see we have a number of features. So scroll offset is one of them. 
Scroll offset is the distance from the top of your sliver, mm -hmm. not the viewport, the top of your sliver, mm -hmm. to the top of the first thing on the screen that is visible. So right now, it's a zero, right? Because the text is the first thing on the, on the right inside the widget that's visible, and it also happens to be at the top of your widget. Mm -hmm. But if you scroll your widget halfway up off the screen, uh, then the scroll offset will be the distance from where, it, where the box would be scrolled off mm -hmm. to the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. How do I, so that's like, that's now that would be changing. Yeah, so now okay. it's changing. Okay. Uh, do I ever know like where I am right now on in the you know, uh, I just want I just want to make changes even now. Ah, I see. Uh, so we actually just like yesterday added this feature. I don't know if the version you have oh, has yeah. it. No. Um, that's if it's not there yet, that's fine. I, I was just uh, we literally just added this feature. Right. Uh, it may not have landed yet, but yes, yeah, so we, we're looking at adding that. Uh, it's useful for things like on iOS. Uh, there's some. Weird effect. What was the special specific effect we were trying to do? I forget what it was we needed it for. But yeah, we, we just added this feature. Mm -hmm. All right. So so I think I can just do. So what doubles do I need to? Can I? So scroll offset to, is a good one okay. to, to okay. base things on. Um, and then I can do. Is, oh, yeah. Uh, to end. Is. This will be weird. It'll be very weird. And and then <laughs> what can we do? Um, so you could, for example, uh, change how much has scrolled based on whether it's odd. Um, huh. So like, yeah. So if it's odd, then fifty and otherwise hundred. That's gonna be very strange. But let's try it. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Notice oh, how the oh. next child is jumping. So the reason the right. next child is jumping is when you're at an odd scroll offset, your next child is 50 pixels uh, further down, but you still have, you've consumed 100 pixels, basically, right. of the scroll offset. Um, and so the next child has already scrolled 50 more pixels. Right. Whereas when you're uh, even, the you've consumed 100 pixels of the scroll offset, even though you're only painting 50 pixels. So what what have, what happens here if I say max paint extend? Again, weird bug that I haven't seen before. So I don't know what's what's going on. Um, if I do this, this should just not change the scroll extend, but change the actual like. I'm actually not sure what this will do. Oh, nothing. Yeah. So if we look at the documentation for sliver geometry, we can look at see exactly what. Um, oh, let's let's go to the actual docs. So we can see exactly what Max Paint Extend does. So a lot of the things on sliver geometry, sliver geometry, a lot of the things on sliver geometry are um, used for very specific cases, and so often you you won't see a direct effect. But if we look at Max Paint Extend. Uh, and then look at the full documentation. Right. Um, the estimated total paint extent. Um, ah, yes. Oh, so sure. this is actually only used for shrink wrapping. That's right. So there, there is a the custom scroll view has a flag that you can set on it that will shrink wrap. Uh, What's shrink wrap? Shrink wrap means it will only be as high as its contents. Mm -hmm. This is very expensive uh, because it means that you have to measure everything in the scroll view. Mm -hmm. um, so it can, and it can only do it uh, in the scroll axis direction. So for a vertically scrolling one, that means in the height. And the reason for that is we know to stop once we reach the height of the of the parent. Right. So we don't need to actually measure everything. If we were to do shrink wrapping in the cross axis, we would literally have to measure everything in the list to figure out what the widest thing was. Right. And that would be a really expensive. Right. Um, in fact, it might be impossible because the list can be infinite. Yes. So you might have to measure infinite amounts of stuff to figure it out. Um, so this one, not interesting in our case. Uh, the ones that are interesting are often layout extent and um, 
paint extent. Mm -hmm. Paint origin is also a fun one. Um, so try try changing the paint origin or the paint extent. Paint origin will decide where the child is going to start painting. Okay, so I'll relative to where it right. should start painting. So you can remove the max paint extent entirely. I think it just defaults to the paint extent. Oh, or not? Yeah, the, I think <laughs> we we got before. Did I, that, did I yeah. say that wrong? Okay. <laughs> uh, so paint origin. Yeah, let's try. And that's like. Uh, uh, that's so you could do something really crazy. Pass in just the constraints dot scroll offset as the paint origin. Okay. Just so now it's always going to stay at the top, right? Because as you scroll it further off the screen, it's getting pushed down more and more. Right. That's essentially how floating app bars work. Uh -huh. oh, sorry, the pin pinned app bars, not floating app bars. Can I do a um, negative? Number? Yeah. So you'll get really weird effects with that. Yeah. Because now it's going twice as fast. Uh huh. Now try doing like times two instead of negative. Oh yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I have no idea what's gonna. Okay, so we have times two now. Yep. I love it. Okay, yeah, I think that this is custom <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so as you fiddle with these different uh, uh, arguments on sliver geometry, particularly if you make them uh, relative to some of the values on scroll offset, you know, multiplying them, adding them, stuff like that, you can get some very odd effects. Th this was particularly fun when I was trying to implement app bar, and I would I, you know, I was just coming up with these things, so I didn't know exactly how they work or anything. And I would like put them in. I still don't really know exactly how they work. Um, I would, I would put them in. I, I think I got the right math, and I would put in the math, and I would scroll, and then like the thing would go up, the app bar would go down, and then the app bar would shrink, and then, like what is happening? Um, so you can definitely get some very strange effects. All right. All right. I think I think that's where we end, unless okay. you have any other crazy uh, <laughs> examples. Um, I like that. Um, so we, we've covered today, um, what we've covered today is many widgets that you use, like grid view, list view, um, app bars, all somehow use slivers inside them. Yep. Um, you don't need to understand slivers to use them. Uh, but then if you want to do something crazy, you can. And to do that, um, you would typically extend the somehow this render sliver um, either this thing or something else. But my uh, recommendation would be literally just go to the render sliver docs. Mm -hmm. And the render sliver docs will walk you through how to build these, what parts are important. And then as you want to figure out like what are the various constraints and geometry uh, attributes are, go to the render um, go to the sliver constraints and sliver geometry docs and look at those. Like you, for each one we've attempted to describe what they actually do. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any that don't make any sense, please follow bug and we'll try and improve it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, um, use comments under the video or uh, I think we have a hashtag boring show. And uh, yeah, see you next time.